Chairman. Um, Mr. Graz, I assume you're uh, keenly aware that you are the first circuit court nominee since 2006 to receive a unanimous not qualified rating from the ABA and that the last nominee who had such a uh, rating was withdrawn. That is my understanding, Senator. Do you uh, think that this is a matter as to which the committee should have no concern? Senator, I uh, have great respect for uh, the amount of time and effort uh, that the American Bar Association put into the process. Uh, I do respectfully disagree with the result. Uh, do you ascribe I, it to partisanship on the part of the investigating lawyers? Senator, as a uh, nominee, I think it's important uh, for me to respect that process. Uh, I, I would not uh, try to advise uh, this committee on the amount of weight that it would give to that. I think that's totally within the, the discretion of the committee uh, to give whatever weight you want to uh, to their evaluation. It was a 14 to 0 vote, was it not, of the committee of the bar? Uh, Senator, I'm, I'm not uh, keenly aware of that. I believe there was one abstention, but uh, that Which would, probably that's why it's 14, because there are 15 of them. Mm -hmm. I, under, I believe that's correct. Yeah. So it's not just the two investigating attorneys. It's the full panel of 14 non-abstaining lawyers, correct? Senator, I uh, understand that the process is that uh, after the initial uh, evaluation is done, uh, that evaluation goes back to the full committee with a recommendation. And for the record, 40 of President Trump's 42 nominees have received ratings of either qualified or well qualified. So I think it would be hard for the committee to ascribe the uh, outcome in this case to a general partisanship of the ABA process. It would not be consistent with the facts. Um, there are a number of themes that emerge from the ABA report. The first is um, difficulty getting people to speak candidly about you in your home state because of what one reviewer called repercussions uh, that they feared and what the other reviewer called uh, an atmosphere of unusual fear around your nomination, that you were well connected politically and that there would be repercussions that uh, caused people to be hesitant to speak with them. That strikes me as a fairly serious matter, particularly the use of the word unusual. I mean, it's not uncommon for lawyers to want to butter up somebody who might very well be a judge and not be caught saying bad things about them. But putting in that word unusual struck me as a um, particularly sharp point uh, in their... Um, discussion. Do you have any concern uh, about why it is that so many of your colleagues would strike these interviewers as fearing repercussions or having unusual fear in terms of speaking to them candidly about you? Uh, Senator, I would have uh, two comments on that. Um, first of all, uh, that uh, comment or criticism was never shared with me uh, by the reviewers, and so I have no idea you know, where that may have come from. On the other hand, uh, it's my opinion that uh, all members of the bar should feel free to speak freely uh, to reviewers when they're conducting uh, this or any other judicial review. How would you feel about a judge who received criticism for a decision he made in one case from a lawyer and took it out on the lawyer in a future case for having had the temerity to criticize the previous decision? A senator, that would very clearly uh, violate the judicial canons of ethics. Indeed. And, uh, yes. Um, you are also described as uh, evincing caginess and lack of disclosure in the process of having temperament issues, including bias, being gratuitously rude, and having a, this is a little bit more complicated, but a combination of a deeply held social agenda and a life devoted to partisan politics leading many of the interviewees in your home state to conclude that you would not be able to treat parties fairly before them because of that deeply held social agenda and history of partisan politics. In sum, I think this is a 
pretty serious, unusual, and damning report, and I'd like to ask that uh, it be made a part of the record together with the statement for the record by Ranking Member Feinstein, and my time has expired. So I just wanted to clarify the record that uh, we will have, I believe on November 15th, the uh, ABA folks come in to testify so that we'll have the chance to hear both sides of what took place in this rather uh, unusual uh, qualification evaluation. Um, and I wanted to clarify one point with um, Mr. Graz, if I might. Um, do you agree, sir, that it would be wrong for us sitting here to base our judgment of your candidacy on your religion? Uh, Senator, yes, I believe that would be a, a violation of Article 6 of the Constitution. And do you also agree that it would be wrong if you, as a judge, were to make decisions in cases before you based upon your religion? Absolutely. So would you finally agree that it would be appropriate for senators in confirmation hearings to assure ourselves that the nominee will not allow his or her own religious views to deny any party appearing before them fair treatment? Senator, yes, I think that would be appropriate. That's uh, a fair inquiry, isn't it? Yeah, I, I am a person of faith. I am also a person of the law. Uh, I very firmly believe in a pluralistic society under the Constitution. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman.